So, um, I hope you feel better. I'm going to pass it here. Thank you very So, I did finish my uh, lecture last class, which is a couple of weeks, so no worries there. Um, so, I just want to finish up the two slides I had left. So, you, you remember we talked about uh, the different type of form the DNA can take. Uh, the Watson Crick model was based on these B forms, but you can also find in cells some type of stretch of base, uh, okay? The A form and the D form. Okay, so A form is a dehydrated form of DNA, and the D form is some kind of weird construct that you can see often in D series. So keep in mind that in biology, or in molecular biology, it's not really the same, you know, strict or sensitive. It depends a lot on what type of base you have and stuff like that. So things can change. Nothing is fixed, okay? All right, so. <laughs> it's not For some reason, I think her queen might be. No, I click her. No, never mind. <laughs> so, uh, to finish that lecture, I want to talk about detecting the <laughs> Obviously, when you enter something between days, you know that each 
Shackled Bay, 3.4 inch trunk. And from your ring, you get that you will. So 3.4 inch trunk, okay? So if you put something in between, of course, it's going to get larger. And because of that, you can change the size of the DNA. It can look different, okay? So you can not intercalate this number line between each stacking bay, okay? You're going to be able to integrate a certain number, but it's going to always be the same number. Okay? Depending on the size of the DNA. So let's say you have, I'm going to come up with weird numbers, it's not real, right? But let's say you have a 1 kb DNA, you'll be able to intercalate, let's say, 20 kb of all that. Okay? If you've got a 2 kb DNA, you will be able to integrate 40 and so on. Okay? So it's totally proportional to the size of the DNA. Okay? So it works that way in, uh, in the lab. So you have this Sagaros gel who has a little well in it here, and you will put uh, your sample inside this well. The gel, the gel is lying on this, in this box, like it looks like that. It's lying there, it's covered by a buffer, and there is an electric field going from the negative electrode to the positive electrode. And because DNA is charged negatively into the phosphate, okay, you will have migration towards the plasma. So, um, you, so you charge your DNA in the gel, it goes down, and usually you have a number line inside the gel, which is positively charged, and it will go up. And I want to put in it, and the HB number line is like that, it will be in the So now, a lot of fun exercise that you can be asked, uh, where you yeah, is that you uh, can have to do some ligation reaction, for example, where you want to put together the plasma that you cut and the piece of the DNA that you're interested in, and you want to put them inside one another. We'll look at this in detail later. But you need to put this plasma and the DNA in a certain ratio for that to work. Okay? So usually you need to know how much of one you have to put because the other. The best ratio is usually one for the plasma and three or four for the insert. Okay? So the second number of lines will help you figure it out this ratio. So if you have something that is two shades long, okay, right? You have a gel, you have a ladder, okay? To tell you this is five shades, this is four, three, two, one, okay? And your plasma is migrating here. So you have a certain fluorescence intensity due to the density of the DNA in your bed. Okay? So if you have two micrograms, you have a certain intensity. If you have four, six, eight, this intensity will go up and up and up. Okay? So now your little G is around one kg. Okay? Same thing. If you have a certain quantity, like one microgram, you have a certain intensity. And if you have more the intensity goes up. What you have to remember is if you have the same intensity for both of these things, it does not mean that you have the same quantity because one is larger than the other. Okay? So the smaller one will take less epigram bromide than the larger one. So if they have the same intensity, you probably have more DNA in the smaller one. Does that make sense? You can have some confidence, yeah. So just to be clear, the, the intensity is just the saturation of, of uh, dark? Yes, in the DNA. So meaning that you always put as much as possible in the DNA. You always saturate the DNA, okay? You put a lot, a really large quantity in the gel, so you're sure that whatever DNA is in there is going to be stable. So you look like that on the DNA, okay? So now, uh, let's do the second part of the um, uh, nucleic acid uh, chemistry. So I'm going to talk about the RNA right there, the structure, and then uh, more into the difference between DNA and RNA. Okay, so RNA, why is this acid very good? <coughs> now, I can't move it.
Are you coming to the NST review? Sorry about that. I don't know why I'm not here. Okay, so the RNA structure, even though DNA has a double strain, or another single strain, are way more complicated than the DNA structure. Is DNA three types of NX? Pretty right, straightforward. Nothing crazy about it. RNA can go do things, okay? <laughs> so you have, first of all, different type of RNA, and that's also why you have different types of structure, okay? Because structure and function, as you know now, are really correlated, okay? So you have ribosomal RNA or rRNA that are important for protein synthesis, okay? The messenger RNA, which are the intermediary or the transporter of the information, and the transfer RNA, which are the adapter between the nucleic acid and the protein. And they work together with the ribosome in order to match the sequence of ATPC with the right amino acid. Okay, so there's different types of organization for this mRNA. So first thing, whatever they are, they always synthesize them using a DNA template. Okay, we're ignoring the DNA. It's an intermediary between DNA and protein. And it makes total sense because you have that DNA, which is the super important molecule in the body, right? If you lose it or you get damaged, then it's something bad is going to happen, right? You're going to get alive, you're going to get cancer, or something else. So you can't touch that molecule. That's why you've got something in between that you can regulate that can get put up again, you know, it will be destroyed and remade every single time. Okay? So it's much easier to regulate something that has a pretty short lifetime than to change something that should never <coughs> Okay? So in um, um, the target, you, you have monocystronic uh, RNA. So monocystronic it comes from the Latin system, I think, which is mean. So monocystronic means that for one RNA in target, you have one gene. Okay. Now, if you look at bacteria, or even better, like the, the viruses, they are polycystronic, meaning that one RNA will be able to code for multiple proteins. Okay? So you have like here. There's one gene on this one here, one, two, and three. And virus can pack in there like 10 genes or something really small. Okay? So they're really good at that. We look later how that's possible um, in the transcription and translation to figure out how I many gene there is on that part. Okay, so RNA, the big difference with DNA is first the presence of that OH here. On the sequence on the sequence column. So DNA is an H. This one is an OH. Okay? <laughs> and also you have so you have the purine, which are the same as the DNA and the H, and you have the purine genes, which are different because you do not have two genes, you have zero. Okay? So <laughs> you normally cannot find uracil in DNA. We'll see <laughs> normally, this is not possible. So it's a way for the body, so, so or the bacteria or whatever, to recognize that this is an RNA and this is a DNA, beside the whole on the sequence line. Probably. Okay, let's make sure I say it. Okay, so um, this is a, the nomenclature I put in the previous lecture, so just put it back there when you go through it that you know you need to remember how this thing are called, be able to recognize a nucleoside versus a nucleotide. <coughs> I do not ask you to know exactly how the period of you know, is made, but recognize your identity that is in the of this period, okay? This kind of thing. Um, also in uh, RNA, besides this base we talked about, there's also a lot of linear bases as well, like in DNA. Mostly the linear bases in DNA are methylated. Okay. For RNA, like I said, it got much more complicated. Okay. 
because they are you know made like they can have this lesion like that one, but they can look really different. So you have the eye nodes, which is the uh, global region of the TRNA, the duridine, which is really important in the holding of the TRNA, and the four Q region. So they all come from the ACU today, okay? But they just have different either methylation group or filter or something else, okay? So these two mostly are really, really important. So the iodine gives you the possibility to reduce the number of tRNA okay, that match with your RNA. Okay? So if uh, each carbon, we'll talk about that a little later, where to put for one amino acid and you will have one tRNA for each different carbon, you will have more than 61 tRNA. Way too much for the cell. What it does is it uses this iodine that can actually pair pretty widely with different types of data and then you diminish the number of cells. So one cell you can recognize in these different ways. Okay? The circular region is really found in widely in tRNA and RNA. You don't find that in mRNA mostly. Uh, you can find them more commonly in the virus, sometimes in new bacteria. And the value is, like I said, stabilizing structure of TRNA. And maybe it helps also the recording of that structure. So, TRNA, that's one example. This is crazy, right? So, first of all, they all look the same, kind of. They have stability modification, but they always look like that uh, form of the structure. Okay? And different bases, like right there, will help making the blue in the orange. Okay, so what they do is they pair at the beginning. But not in two strains, they do four. Okay? But to stabilize the structure and make sure it's set together when you move around, you need to clear the uh, base that you find here. So here's the list of the different types of base. And here is the uh, carbon on the on mRNA. So we'll see that later, but code for an amino acid, you probably know that. You need three base, right? You know that. And you need what we call an NT carbon, which is a mirror of this carbon. Okay? So this global position in position one corresponds to the position three in the mRNA, and this I use it to actually bind and create um, interaction with different bases, not just one, but the B or D or D or A. It actually does do a lot of different things. We'll go back to this later during translation. Okay, so the RNA structure, this DC is really, really close to the DNA structure. Okay? So you have the ribose, the phosphodiester bond, you have five prime, three prime end that are different. The five prime end is phosphate, it has a phosphate, the three prime end has an OH, you get the base here, and the backbone is negative. Okay? Not too crazy about it. So this molecule is extremely hydrophilic because of the fact that it's negative, but also because it includes that OH here, which is really reactive. Okay? So you don't have you have linear polymer, like I said before, you don't branch, you don't pop anything, okay? It's a linear polymer. You have the same directionality, five times the same time, it's one string. And uh, it can be idolized by RNAs, okay, that are present in uh, the cytosol of the cell usually, or in as well, under alkaline conditions. So you remember that he is not conductive at all to alkaline conditions. So you put him in a very good environment, he's fine. Okay? <coughs> RNA will be great. Okay? So, <laughs> besides the RNA, this is a list of the type of enzymes you can find that will cleave RNA. So, RNA has much more enzymes that can it or destroy it or you know, process it, just because you need these things to be kind of stable in order to regulate exactly the amount of protein you want at a certain moment in the cell. Okay? So that makes total sense that it's much more sensitive than the DNA. Okay? So you have sRNA which are in plants and prevent inbreeding. So if you breed two plants that are the same type, you know, they get in the Y button. There, but um, they will have a way of preventing that okay, by destroying the mRNA from the other plant. 
the RNAs which your ribosome is really important for the maturation of the transfer of the RNA. Okay? The dicer, a uh, dicer is really, really important. It's used a lot in uh, molecular biology techniques. So dicer is a really cool enzyme that can actually cleave double stranded RNA. Okay? So this is really important to protect from the protect the cell from a viral attack. Okay? So it's a bit also in the Cas9 CRISPR orientation, where you the bacteria will keep two pieces of the virus once you got infected in a bank, right? And then you will, when the virus comes back, you will recognize that virus with the tiny little piece of the RNA and with it with Cas9. So dicer is kind of on the same orientation, but for the okay? You know that Cas9 CRISPR are in bacteria, even though we use it. They are bacteria. Like dicer is the equivalent of the target. Okay? And uh, you can use white in RNA sequencing techniques. So basically, what you can do is you can make an RNA that will recognize another RNA in your cell. Okay? You can put that inside your cell. And if you form a double stranded RNA, dicer will play with it and you can remove the expression of that protein from your cell. Okay? <coughs> All right, so this is the alkaline reaction um, with uh, RNA. So basically, um, the decrossing in water will attack that OH, and it will uh, itself attack the phosphate and cleave the RNA. So you're going to have this kind of RNA, which is hydrolyzed, and this is what's left from the upper side. So remember that uh, when you pass the urea there, we took out a phosphate. That's what makes it up. And it can be then transformed. In two prime or three prime monophosphate by ICAP. Okay? So, what I want you to remember, I'm not going to talk with this, like in biochemistry reaction, like crazy, you can find that in Wikipedia as well, is to remember that why RNA is sensitive to alkaline reaction. Okay? What are the major points for that? And why do they need not? Okay? Alright, so the RNA, beside this crazy Behavior it can take with the PRNA structure and all. It also organizes itself on an S. <coughs> Why is that? Why do you know that? That could be one thing that you want it to be compact. But what will make it doing this inside the formation and not like a bowl or hydrogen They don't have hydrogen bond. With another, okay. What they have is this in that direction, the vulnerable. So remember the the stacking of the base. So base stacking happens not just when the base are together with another one. Okay, it's not because you have A and C there that you stack with the one underneath. You stack you, you stack them on one string. Okay. So because of this stacking and the fact that they turn to the remember the six degree scale of the reform, you will have RNA organizing itself into eggs. Okay? <laughs> it's usually an A form, not a B form, so it's more expensive. Okay? Um, so it's also a right and elix. So here you have the skeleton model. So the red dot both, both there are phosphate. This is the right with the So there you go. Um, so it's a single strand right uh, and elix. This is the way you and also, there is a huge um, force between purine and purine stacking. So if two purine are even here, it's one purine, one purine, and one purine, they're so attracted to one another that they may switch the purine away and stack together. So the addicts may be much less regular. Okay, and they end up. So purine purine are really strong compared to purine purine or purine purine. purine, purine. Okay? <coughs> Um, so put them in an A form. The RNA, even though you know we say oh it's single strand, you can totally bind in. Okay? That's not impossible. You can pair the DNA as any other DNA. Okay? And uh well so this base pairing is creating all these structures. They are specifically connected. So to visualize RNA now. 
So that's where, actually, when I was preparing this lecture, I got really puzzled by this. Um, because I was looking at, okay, we, we talk about visualizing the, or the DNA, so now it's hard to visualize the RNA. So basically, we use, oh, sorry, we use also epidermal bromide, same thing. But then you're like, okay, but epidermal bromide, I thought, was fluorescent when it was in an hydrophobic environment, right? So away from water, not in the water. So in a single stream, how that process, how it's going to stack and be fluorescent. Yeah? So I thought, this is weird. So I looked through forum and also I got a little crazy explanation. <laughs> Um, so basically, one thing you have to know is the RNA can always put itself in weird structure. Even if you are putting it in a cell, it can still form some structure. So if you use a protocol where it's really like flat, you're not going to have any direction to this issue provide. But in a classical preparation of RNA, you always have some crispy and stuff. So you can always enter calate, not in an ellipse, but in between bonds. Okay? So obviously the sensitivity is way lower. So you have much less uh, fluorescence when you try to look at RNA than when you try to look at DNA. So you have to compensate the concentration of the epithelium bromide in the gel to the Okay? Alright, so <laughs> now um, now that you know about DNA, you know about RNA, uh, we're gonna do too much more into like the structure of both of these. Okay. So structure is actually like I think really really central in biology in general. Okay? It's even more important than the sequence. Okay? Because you can have proteins that have a complete different sequence that codes for them in the genes, but will adapt the same structure. Okay? So structure is fundamental for RNA. Okay? So DNA and RNA are under the same kind of rule. So the structure can help for regulation. So the way it's bending or exposing the liver group, the macro group, whatever, may lead to the binding or the mutation of proteins on DNA. Okay? Which may be really important to start replication or start translation or translation. Um, you also have the issue of stability. Okay? So RNA being really sensitive to alkaline conditions, you know, this kind of thing. It needs to stabilize itself. Okay, you can't just stay like this. Look at me. Because all the bad days, the real days are hydrophobic. Right? They don't want to be controlled in that sense. So you need to focus. So the structure is really important for the stability of RNA. And you can also find really weird structure at the end of the chromosome, like the spiflex and the spiflex, that actually stabilize even DNA in a more robust so you find that in telomere in uh, chromosome. And the structure can be called N function, so PRNA or RNAs are really the structure uh, compound molecules, okay? PRNA is RNA, pure RNA, has a real base that helps the protein. Ribosomes are a mix between RNA and protein, okay? And both of them form the really sweet little bulk stuff with an acid <coughs> that helps the relation. <laughs> Okay, so here is an example of um, uh, the structure of DNA being important for the binding of certain proteins. So basically, um, you probably all heard about the Tata box, right? But the name and the program is always so fun. So the Tata box is basically a region that is really rich in proteins in the DNA. Instead of that, you got a really weird bend into the structure of DNA. Okay, so if you have multiple A stacking with one another, the way they stack will increase the bending, the stacking will increase in the DNA. Okay, so instead of being regular, you're going to stack way more far away. So you bend the DNA. This Tata protein here will recognize it and will go and bend it even more. Okay, and recognize it easily. So it's even more than, it's not just like the sequence that the protein actually recognizes, but you recognize it. Okay? So what's important in the Tata box is not the stretch of A and C in the order of it, is that you have a region that is rich in A and B and then. Okay? So then you can have all kinds of crazy stuff happening. So did you all heard about palindrome? Yes, no? 
Yes. So you know it's like the word rotator. <coughs> you can do it one way or the other way. It's rotator. <coughs> the five prime, three prime theorem. <laughs> like rotator is the three prime, five prime theorem. Basically, it's a pretty sequence that can be written in both directions. Okay? So this sequence usually they like to stick to one another. So here is one example where you have this two that and this two is the other two. So if you have a palindrome in one string, you're going to find it in the other string by the mirroring. So this one, I like that thing there. So when I looked at it, I was like, what does it mean? So basically, what this sequence is doing is it's doing something like that and like that. Okay? So it is twisting just in two directions. That's one way, if they are on two different strings. And then you can have them aligned like that. Okay? So this one, what they're going to do is go this way. Okay? So it will fall that way. So one will go that and that, and the other one will go this way. Okay? So that's really important for the structure of our So it's not stabilized by the other strand. So you're going to have this kind of thing happening to it. So the this repeating of region, even when they are, <coughs> there's an intersectionality region, like a region that is not on a in between, will form this weird earthing structure. And you see that in RNA all the time. Right? And if you have that in DNA, what you call the cruciform structure. So you have one going up like that, and the other one going up like that, going down. And this is also really important for some radiation, and we'll see that also. Later in the class, okay? So this is what's going in the loop. <laughs> so you have to keep in mind that this is still something that biologists look at and explore every day. So this is a modeling of one specific RNA that produces some kind of enzyme in vitro, whatever, okay? So a, a, a computer will tell you, okay, if you see the huge red, what's going to form? So you know how the RNA will stabilize itself, but the most stabilized structure that the RNA can have. And this thing here, that would be a fold of the RNA in the bottom. But nobody really knows if it's actually broken that way. Or if it will be always that way. Okay? But that's a possibility to stabilize the RNA structure. And we have all kinds of names that you have to remember. So air thing, okay, long and a little bit fold. Here it's a bowl. Yes, it's the carrot one side. And here it's um, internal loop. Okay? So this is a form because you have the pairing, the classical pairing, A to B. Okay? A to B, B to C, of course. But also because you have um, this, um, you know, purine purine stacking versus purine purine versus purine purine. You know, so this type of bowl is the absence of that. So the purine will come together, stack and push, you know, move the other region. But if you look at the sequence by itself, you know, depending on what kind of parameter you will put in there, you can come up with different types of structure. Does that make sense? All right. <clears throat> so here, like what as nucleic acid can do, which are not what's in preparing, okay? So what's in preparing is the ATBC classical stuff, okay? But each of these nuclear bases have also other um, atoms that can drop into items and drop, okay? So this is this is the main pairing, but you can have some other. So one is called the histidine pairing to oppose the what's in preparing. So what happened is that you got an AT that is used into a into a uh, hydrogen bonding and the Watson Crick stuff, and you've got another one, another two, coming and doing the hydrogen bonding, the free uh, atom that can engage in the bonding. Okay? So that's a classical oxygen uh, pairing. And here also is a C joined with the DNH. And you need a <coughs> cosinated C for that. Okay? <coughs> um, so again, I'm not asking you to remember exactly where the thing goes. Uh, Again, that it exists, okay? And which kind of atom can go into the uh, hydrogen bonding, okay? I'm never going to ask you to draw all right? This is, this one I will ask, because it's so beautiful. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 just learn that one. 
Um, so this one is the famous uh, tetraplex uh, with the GT. So this is found really commonly in the telomere. So you probably heard about telomere length and aging. But that's so because you look way younger than I do, you do the telomere longer. Okay? It's nothing to do with brain and all that stuff. It's just a telomere. Okay? So my telomere got way shorter <laughs> than yours. So it's still okay. But when they get so short that it starts eating into your genes, that's where you've got that. We hope you died over that. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but it's one cause of the cancer. So now we know that our population are aging much more, and it's way, it's crazy because in the 1800 people died at like 40. I would be dead by now. So, but um, nowadays people have an expectancy of life way longer. Women more than men. <laughs> so 80 years old will be 35 years. Um, <laughs> um, so that's the hormones, okay? I don't know if you can do it. You can do your last. It's just the hormones. So um, we, we have that life expectancy. It's increasing not because now our telomeres are six more stable, <laughs> six billion, but it's because uh, we have less disease. But the telomere now, because we live so long, they got shorter and shorter and shorter. And so we see a lot more cancer happening in older people nowadays, just because we got, we just beginning it, just wasted. That's it, it's new, right? It's time to go. So when we figure out how to extend these things, we will be clever. Really wink briefly, because that's not fixing anything. It's <laughs> skinny point. But hey, okay, so <laughs> we go back to this transfer RNA again. We're going to go back and forth with them a lot because they are really interesting uh, molecules. Um, and they engage in order to stabilize that structure and also to have this structure really conserved. I mean, you look at the 30 whatever the RNA you have in the cell, but it's literally really, really similar. Even though they're not exactly the same, okay, because they need to carry different things, they really keep that closet structure. So you have this type of sharing happening in. Uh, so, uh, which are beautiful the <coughs> So one in with a seven methyl one in. Yeah, we saw this one in DNA also. Uh, you have an adenine with an N2 methyl one in, again a methyl. And this adenine adenine also uh, to stabilize the loop or this little spot here, which is actually one of the variables to cause the tumor. So just keep in mind that even though what's been trained is the rail, you know, like the front one thing. It's not fixed, okay? There's always a room for reducing the amount, okay? So don't be surprised when you've got this structure. <coughs> like All right, ribosomes. So this one I even more incredibly in some of the structures. So here is what we call the common core of the ribosome. So basically, it's what usually, usually there, okay? Now, depending on bacteria or eukaryotes, you have some various things, but you always have that common core. So it's made out of protein and um, uh, DNA, RNA. So the, um, the light blue are the protein, and the red, the pink red are the RNA. And this is, I like that drawing as well, because you can see the twisting of the yellow right there around the protein right there. Okay, and that creates these three sides that are really important. And again, we'll go back to this later. Just here, you learn that associated to protein to stabilize the structure, ribosome are extremely important to me. And they have two parts, like the rod, the 30 acid, and the sound like a Okay? All right, so now uh, let's go to more of physical things with DNA. So uh, one really important uh, in molecular biology is the capacity of the DNA to heat up and separate. Okay? So you can separate, you have to separate these strands during replication and translation, but they can't stay together. So obviously the DNA can be covered under strict regulation. But you can also do it after season two by just heating it up. Okay? So the cool thing is you can separate <coughs> a single strand and a double strand. 
And when you do that, you got the, the nitro concave. So the DNA double A usually absorbs the DNA like flat and the single concave, the orange. Do you know why? So what is absorbing the human light? Which, which molecule is that The beta. And you, you got these beta that are buried into the double helix or exposed to where they're producing. So, but as you see, they will absorb UV light much better when they are exposed than when they're not. Okay? So that's why when you look at that absorbing of um, the double helix structure or the plant structure, you almost get a twofold break of filling. And so, um, this is really cool when you do microbiome, actually. So, you see the double stranded DNA here, we follow the, where the sigma is, and the single stranded DNA, which is much more linear, because it's absorbent, okay, uh, with the temperature. Because, I mean, you, you will probably untwist some part of the RNA, so some days that were kind of buried will be exposed, but it's much more linear. Well, the DNA is like, not doing anything in the cell to burst off. <laughs> okay? So you have this temperature here, which is called the melting temperature, which is really important, is when 50% of the DNA is in a double A structure and 50% is in a single structure. So this is single strand DNA, this is double strand DNA, and this is in between. Okay? And here, obviously, you remember the question that you couldn't even work. Thicker <laughs> when I told you that um, when you have a rich DC, usually a normal part, same thing when you have uh, a rich DC DNA. So if you take the DNA of a thermal part, heat it up, and you're going to heat it up much higher. Okay? So now let me just try this. Bear with me. This is my last eye clicker. <laughs> So A T makes it then. <laughs> oh, you call it in AA? Let me see. You are? Okay, go. I keep you focused on this time. I don't want to move anything. <laughs> What is cyclopentane there? <laughs> there I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? What? Yeah, but that's RNA that makes it. Sue. What do you think? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I was thinking a B. I'll go with D. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> you still? 
feel like we're gonna have a wide spread. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. I Really, they come out. <laughs> wow. 